Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. I have tallied up the votes, and the legion that you guys want to hear about first is the Salamanders. So let's get into 40 Facts About the Salamanders. The Salamanders are one of the Loyalists' first founding chapters of Space Marines. They originally served as the Imperium's 18th Space Marine Legion during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. The Salamanders as a chapter are unusually concerned with civilian casualties compared to most other Space Marines, and believe that one of their most important duties is to protect the lives of the Emperor of Mankind's innocent subjects wherever and wherever possible. Their homeworld is the volcanic death world of Nocturne. Their attitude of saving others developed as a consequence of the Salamander's own unusually close connection to the Nocturnian people as they are one of the only chapters of Astartes who continue to interact with their families and other people of their homeworld after their transformation into space marines. It is not uncommon for a salamander to serve as a clan leader among the Nocturians and live with them when the chapter business does not require him to remain at the chapter's fortress monastery on Nocturne's moon of Prometheus. The salamander and their people as a whole are also defined by their adherence to the variation of the imperial cult called the Promethean cult. As with several of the Proto-Legion grouping, in the closing stages of the Unification Wars, much remains unknown as to the exact founding and intake of the 18th Legion. In order to protect the new Legion from both hostile action and for potential espionage, the origins and early deployment of Salamander Legion's gene strains are hidden. We will never know where the original 18th Legionnaires came from on Terra. The 18th Legion that would later become known as the Salamanders, along with what would later become the Space Wolves and the Alpha Legion, comprised a group of proto-legions that was created in secret. This element of mystery surrounding them established a distance between the three and the others, at least subconsciously in the minds of their fellow Astartes, particular in regards to their earliest intake of initiatives, which would later blossom into a level of distrust. It is forgotten now by most that at the outset of the Great Crusade, their reputation being forged by the 18th Legion was a far more bloody one that they would later carry until they were unified with their Primarch Vulcan. This bloody reputation was set into motion on the first major battle of which they became publicly identified, the assault of the Tempest Galleries in the dying days of the Unification Wars on Ancient Terra. To learn more about this horrible battle, please check out our Conquest of the Caucasus Wastes video. During this battle, the Legion suffered terrible losses and had to rapidly rebuild. This caused them to miss out on the initial explosion of expeditionary fleets departing Terra in the early years of the Great Crusade. Instead, the 18th Legion was often assigned across a considerable number of different reinforcement groups and specialist units such as rogue trader expeditions and rarely fought together as a legion. In many of these cases, the warriors of the 18th legion would be the only space marines taking part in the conflict. This created a paradoxical reputation both as saviors but also as heralds of bloody deeds, forlorn hopes, and last ditch holding actions. For an Imperial Army unit to be assigned alongside the 18th Legion was a sign that the forthcoming battle would be a murderous affair, be it to take a siege, counter a counterattack, or hold the line against an alien onslaught in order to protect the civilian population from massacre. It was normal for the 18th Legion to triumph against all odds, and that was the only way a victory was worth its name. In the worst instance, such as the legendary Manticore Catalysm, retreat for the 18th became often unthinkable, even when tactical knowledge would dictate otherwise. Their reputation is known to have won them great favor in certain circles of the Imperial Court and High Command, while others, such as the Lord Commander Actica, 
of the Ultramarines, who went on open record as stating that the 18th carried the seed to their own destruction. During the Great Crusade, the Emperor found the Primarch of the 18th Legion, Vulcan. To get Vulcan's story, please check out our 40 facts on the Primarch of the Salamanders. It is believed that Vulcan did not become unified with his own legion for some years after his rediscovery, but instead stayed alongside the Emperor under his direct tutelage, during which time his presence was kept from the other Imperial knowledge. Vulcan fought at the side of the Emperor in battle. A colossal, nameless warrior in emerald armor scaled like a dragon of ancient Terran myth. When Vulcan came to his legion, it was in the hour of their greatest need. The 18th, led by their lord commander, Cassian Vaughn, had become embroiled in a rearguard defense of a cluster of colony worlds near the Tarvis Division against a wave of orc marauders. Fighting against vast and overwhelming odds, the legion's primary force, numbering some 19,000 space marines, had marshaled the local defenders and held out for nearly a standard years in a series of running battles against well over millions of orc raiders scattered across the hundreds of ramshackled ships. The actions of the Legion had allowed the evacuation of three entire planetary populations to the nominal safety of the terrorist system, but at a terrible cost. As the conflict progressed, they suffered the grievous wounding of their commander, while the remainder of the 18th became all but trapped on the dead world of Antium. Terrace was far from the embattled frontier of the expanding Great Crusade. The assistance from other legions would have been difficult to obtain, but regardless, such aid was not asked by the 18th, who had determined to succeed alone or die in the attempt. When Vulcan arrived, he did not do so alone, for he brought with him 3,000 new initiates, the first of the legion to be raised from Nocturne, along with a host of new warships, war machines, and arms, all fabricated to the Primarch's own exacting specifications. They fell upon the Orc Marauders like a thunderbolt, and shattered the largest of the Space Hulks orbiting Antium, Vulcan leading his warriors within, purging the vast rock with fire and planting seismic charges at its heart to destroy it. Spurred on by this unexpected aid, the rest of the 18th hurled themselves in renewed fury at the orcs besieging them, slaughtering and scattering the green-skinned Xenos before them, heedless of their depleted munition and manpower, leaving nothing for the reserves should they fail. Caught between this hammer and anvil of savagery that overmatched their own, the Orc Horde was broken and put to flight. The survivors were relentlessly pursued and consumed by fire. Vulcan had arrived. As their saviors removed their helms, and the Terran legionnaires looked upon the faces of their brothers and their gene father, they could not help but feel that they were one and their Primarch had come to claim them. The survivors of the Terran 18th knelt immediately before their Primarch. But Vulcan bid them rise, saying that all his sons were equal, and he was no petty king, needing shows of obedience. Seeking out the mortally wounded Lord Commander, he conferred the formal transfer of the Legion's mastery by presenting the fallen warrior with a broken power claw of the Orc Warlord who had struck him down to seal the pact between him and his Legion. After the Battle of Antium, Vulcan set about remaking and reforging his legion. He was swift to gather together his men and unify it once again as a whole. Vulcan paid respects to all previous promises, such as the maintenance of a permanent garrison at Garion Deep, which stood guard should the Manticore ever return. With his force brought together, Vulcan returned the 18th Legion to Nocturne where under his direction, a powerful stronghold equal to any legion fortress in the Imperium was being constructed on Nocturne's moon of Prometheus to serve as his headquarters and armory. Here the legion was reordered and rearmed, and most importantly, Vulcan gave the legion a common purpose and belief, 
In order to do this, he drew not only on what which he had learned at the sight of the emperor and from the imperial war machine, but also on the culture and deeply ingrained warrior and mythical traditions of Nocturne. Vulcan was wise enough to retain the value and experience of the Terran veterans. He incorporated the 18th Legion's past heraldry into that of the Reformed Legion and making their foremost warriors, the Pry Guard, Praetorians, the elite body of chapter masters that would serve both as their honor guard and the paragons of the standards he would set on the legion. For the fallen first master of the 18th, Cassian Vaughn, Vulcan fashioned with his own hands a unique dreadnought sarcophagus, the Iron Dragon, so that Vaughn could serve as a protector of Prometheus and the future of the legion. The remade 18th Legion would now take its name from the greatest of Nocturne's predators, ancient deadly creatures whose blood was fire and whose hide were as hard as emerald steel, the Salamanders of Nocturne. In this, Vulcan's choice carried a layer of meaning, for not only were the Nocturnian Salamanders monsters of savage power with a great significance to the native people, but as creatures, they showed unflinching loyalty to their own blood and offspring, and were never more ferocious than that in their defense. And those were 40 facts on the Salamanders. Of course, there is more facts to come for the Salamanders, so please comment down below and tell me what you guys want to hear next for the Salamanders. Um, just an FYI, the Vulcan uh, story is already out on the channel, so just check out our playlists. We have some um, Primark play, or we have a Primark, Primark playlist. So check that out so you can get the Vulcan 40 Facts video. And we also have the Salamanders Special Weapons uh, lore video that came out last week. So subscribe to the channel to get that. Thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting on this video. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh,